Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. In this morning's sermon, we'll be looking at the unifying message of the collect epistle and gospel and examine how they share the common message of action as we enter into the time of Lent, which is a season of preparation. Let us start by reading the, the collect for today. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, Give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh, being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness to thy honor and glory, who liveth and reigneth with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Consider these words from the Collect. Give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh, being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions and righteousness and true holiness to thy honor and glory. In the Collect, we ask God to help us change our natural evil tendencies so we can live life here His way and honor His wishes so we can be truly happy. This is a basic message behind most of the Collects because it is the truth. Without his help, we end up with what we want, not with what we need. And what we want is not always good for us, but what we need is always good for us. We're asking for God's help to differentiate between our wants and needs. Lent is the time in which we focus on fighting our sinful selves and working up the Holy Ghost to reconcile us with what God wants for us. This is what the Collect is referring to when it talks about abstinence. The Collect is calling us to subdue our naturally fleshly, fleshly desires with the help of the Holy Ghost. What we want is not the same as what we need. Lent is a time in which we focus on separating our wants from needs and concentrating on what our needs truly are. We need the Holy Ghost to help us in this endeavor for sure. By ourselves, we would fail miserably at this task, but with the help of the Holy Ghost, we will surely succeed. We just have to listen to what he says and then put his words into action. We are asking him to help us fight our human nature and follow his divine nature. We are attempting to replace our nature with that of God's. It is a long and difficult road we must travel doing this, but we are going to be much happier in the long run if we at least do our best. Do or do not, there is no try, Yoda is quoted as saying, and I find it applicable here and in my own life. We have to act, not just say that we are going to act, but we must physically perform actions. Want and need Two used, used interchangeably in both our speech and thought that do not mean the same thing. Think about that. Following the thought of the collect, Paul asks us to be worthy of the grace God has given us. He tells the people that when they needed him, he was there. Following his example, we need to be there for those around us. We must not frustrate God's work by showing up late or not at all. It all goes back to Jesus' saying, No man can serve two masters. We have to choose who we are going to serve, God or Satan, slant mammon. And then once we have chosen to serve God, we need to do our best to be there for him and his people. Action and not just dictions alone are needed to serve God. Our actions will reflect who we truly serve, God or the forces of Satan. Which side will you serve? And then do you have to choose one side or the other? Pick the winning side now, which is the forces of God, and you'll have a rich, everlasting life. Where our treasure is, there our heart will be also, to quote Jesus. So let's make sure our treasure is in heaven and not on earth where moth and rust corrupt 
and thieves break through and steal. If our treasure is in heaven, there it is incorruptible, and thieves do not steal. When times are tough, we need to remember where our treasure truly lies, and it is not in earth, but in heaven. The key to winning this battle for souls is to never, ever, ever give up and to trust in God and dread not. It may get gloomy and depressing sometimes, but as long as we turn back to God and his scriptures and the church for comfort, then all will be well with our souls. And also remembering, when we are finished running the race here on earth, so to speak, we will get to spend eternity with God, Jesus, and our family who have gone before. It makes bearing the trials and tribulations of this world a lot easier. When the devil attempted to tempt Christ, he showed how little he knows of him. It also shows us how arrogant the devil, how arrogant the devil truly is to even attempt this. He was very foolish to think that his attempts to tempt our Lord would work. If we emulate our Lord, it shows how little the devil will be able to tempt us with his deceit. Jesus provides us with the perfect template to resist Satan and his wiles. Do not even entertain them for a fraction of a second and just tell Satan to get thee hence. If we follow him, we'll be able to withstand any temptations that arises as our Lord showed for us in the desert 2,000 years ago. Consider how little the devil offers you and how much Christ offers you. The temptation is ever so much less. The devil is often referred to as the deceiver or dissimulator. His forte is deception. He seems to be one thing, but is another. He offers what he has no intention or ability to deliver. He actually has zero ability to, to deliver on his large promises. He has no right to give away what is not his. The devil clearly knows that Jesus is the Son of God. There is no doubt in his mind. So having understood that, consider what he offers Jesus in temptation. Remember, Jesus has fasted 40 days of his own choice. Now comes the devil daring him to show his powers by turning the stone into bread. This to the son of he who delivered manna daily to the Jews in the wilderness for forty years. Cast thyself down and let angels catch thee. This to he who walked on water. Up to the mountain look out. Here it is all yours if you worship thee. This to he who, as it says in Psalm 95, In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared to dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. The devil promised Jesus nothing that was his to give, nothing that would help Jesus in the real world beyond his shadowlands. He never does. Jesus knew this, and we would be wise to remember this. Unfortunately, people that do not have the Holy Spirit within them do not see this, and sadly allow themselves to be deceived by the devil. We have an advantage in that we have the Holy Ghost, and if we listen to him, we cannot be deceived by the devil. We have to realize the devil is all about shortcuts. Remember, if the shortcut was the best way, it would not be a shortcut. The devil will not help us at all in the long run if you look at things from the eternal perspective. That is what we need to keep in mind every time he tempts us. And doing the right thing in the end will be far easier than if we try to double shortcuts. We have to remember that what the devil offers us will pale in comparison to what God has to offer us and that the way of the devil will cause us much pain here on earth and a lot more pain after we leave earth. If we keep that in mind, 
it makes it ever so much easier to fight off the devil and his temptations. The temptation of Jesus is no different than the devil's attempt to tempt us. The devil never delivers what we need, only what we in our imperfection want. This is where knowing the difference between what is a want and a need for us will assist. If we can recognize that his temptations are preying on our desire for our wants, we can shut down the temptation by focusing on what we need. He can't understand what we really need. He only knows what we want. This is an advantage we have over him. We understand what we, what we truly need. If we remember it, then holding off against the temptations is easier. Remember as little as the devil understands Christ, same way as we are in God, so he understands little of us. He will never offer you real help. Remember that, and the temptation is ever so much less. Or as my grandfather said, keep your eye on the donut, not on the hole. There is but one way to heaven. That easy to find, easy to fall, easy to hike path does not lead to the summit where the eternal life in the real world awaits. Bump in your heart to the Holy Ghost. Use his power to follow our Lord to God who awaits in heaven. The time is now, not tomorrow. Time has come indeed. How you act it is by our actions we are known. Be of God, love of God, act of God.